like uh, for you uh, on the job? Well, there's no such thing as a typical week. I was just saying to Richard, uh, I mean, this week, two plays are opening, and they're both opening on the same night. Um, other weeks in Toronto, almost nothing opens. Uh, other weeks, something opens, it seems, every night of the week. So I don't have such a thing as a typical day. I mean, I have this rather strange schedule now where I, I write a weekly column, which appears on Saturday, which has to be delivered on Tuesday. So I'm basically writing about what's happened 10 days before the column appears. But also during the course of the week, I tend to review one play that's open during that week. Uh, so if you can find what I'm writing, good luck. Do tell me, <laughs> a, do tell me about it. And um, otherwise, my schedule depends, I think, on A, whether there's a play to see that evening, and B, um, whether I have a review to deliver. And uh, if, say, I go to see a play on Tuesday, I will then I will go to see it on Tuesday, on Tuesday night. I will probably review it on the Wednesday, and have a, uh, I think I have an unusually generous deadline at the post. And it will appear, we hope, on the Thursday, and sometimes it will be held over because they have too much other stuff or, the, or that particular section of the paper is, is thin, and it will appear on the Friday. And otherwise, I will try and remember what I saw the previous week, and come Tuesday, I will try and write about all of that. And it could be one play or two plays or three plays depending, really. And that's what, my, um, that's what my schedule is. And it gets different during the summer, which um, I believe used to be the really dead period um, in, in Toronto-centered theater, and is now the liveliest, actually. Um, I don't quite know how it's going to pan out in, in the future, but it's the time when Stratford and the Shaw Festival are both going full blast, and they are considered to be part of the Toronto theater scene as far as critics are concerned. For the last, uh, whatever it is, six, seven, eight years, um, it's also been the time when Soul Pepper have been doing their season at Harbourfront, which is live into the scene up almost unrecognizably. And, uh, but that, as they're now working all the year round, that's not going to be the same anymore, I think. But on the whole, the summer is, is, is literally the hottest time as far as, uh, just, just as far as actually seeing the stuff and filing reviews is concerned. What about you, Richard? How many plays do you see in here? Um, counting the fact that I usually don't go to a city without trying to see a play, I'd say it's probably about 250 a year. Um, <clears throat> my actual schedule is different from Robert's and Lynn's, which is good. We have three different ways of doing it here. The Toronto Star is the last paper, believe it or not, in North America that files what we call overnight uh, or on deadline, which is what all the papers used to do. Uh, in other words, the show ends at whenever it is, 10, 10, 30, 11, 11, 15, I run down to the paper on opening night and write the review. Uh, and I have to usually have it done by midnight unless I get a papal dispensation. If we know in advance, it's going to be a very long, long show and have requested it. Um, it's interesting. In New York, you get to read the reviews the day after the show opens, but the critics have all gone to previews days in advance like they did here with Lord of the Rings. We were all asked to go to Lord of the Rings Sunday before it opened uh, for the most part. Uh, and then we had days to do it, which is what New York does nowadays. The critics go to see the shows anywhere from five to seven days in advance sometimes, and then they write their review and it comes out on opening day. But we're still in there, and as I said, on a regular basis, although uh, every now and then a paper will plunk it out for a big show, we do it regularly. So I file overnight. In addition to that, I do a very, very large amount of interviewing and feature writing and column writing for the star as well. So. I mean, to be honest, in an average year, I have 300 to 360 pieces in the star a year, almost one a day. Um, and sometimes they're not theater related. So fewer travel or fewer interviewing movie stars during the film festival. But I'd say 275 to 300 of them are theater related pieces. And if you read the paper, you'll know that I'm breaking news of a story, you know, what's happening in this theater, or I'm interviewing someone who's there, or I'm doing a think piece about what happened and what I liked or didn't like to sum things up. And they generally can appear any day of the week. Our, our, our weekend section, our Saturday section, is pre-printed, and you have to have the material in that on Wednesday, which means the only way, time of the, of, the, uh, of the week that we cannot file overnight, mostly, is if show opens Friday night. We can't get into the Saturday paper unless we get into the news section at the front, which we don't often do. So if a play opens Friday, I usually have till Monday to review it. 
but these features you read on Saturday, I've had to have written and gotten into the paper by Wednesday. So our weeks are all kind of, my week is heavily front loaded. I'm writing articles most of the time, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, because our what's on section goes to bed Tuesday, our Saturday section goes to bed Wednesday. So all these feature articles are written by me Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And then fortunately, the big night for theater reviews is usually Thursday. So uh, you don't have to review much on Monday. Uh, so usually I'm feature writing first part of the week, reviewing second part of the week, although as Robert said, that changes. There are, we had one week from hell where I think nine to ten shows opened in about three days. Uh, I don't know why they do this. And then the publicists call us up and say, why didn't you write about us more? Or why did we get such a small review? And you want to say, don't all open at the same time. Anyway, that's what the day is like. It's very elastic. The paper also does send me, fortunately, to New York, to London, or to other cities. And when I'm there, I see as much theater and talk to as many people and do as many interviews as I possibly can. So um, I'm, I have been referred to as the Energizer Bunny. And I kind of stick with that definition. Can you beat Richard's 250, Lynn? <clears throat> and raise me. <laughs> I see 250 a year on my own, uh, and also mi mixed in with that is what I have to see for here and now. Um, they they don't cover every single play, but they will cover. They try to do a, a cross section, uh, a smattering of the larger one, the larger theaters, the smaller theaters. They try. They've been trying to do them the next day. Uh, or at least maybe one day later than that. Uh, I see the play at night. I do the script. I write the script. In other words, the script is the questions. I, I write the questions for Matt Galloway, who's the, the host of Here and Now, that will lead me into the review, that will tell the, the listener what the show is about, um, maybe a little bit of history about that, where it is in the playwright's life, where it is uh, in the director's life, some kind of historical content. Then I would write about uh, what the production was like, the acting, etc., and they would like to have a recommendation. So I do the recommendation as well. Uh, that's uh, I do that. I, uh, the the uh, recording time, it's all live, by the way, could be 3.40, 4.40, or 5.40. Uh, at night, I go to the theater. Um, after that, bef before I go to the theater, I'm writing my Slotkin letter. After I go to the theater, I'm writing my Slotkin letter. From 9 to 5, I'm working at my real job, at my, the job that pays my taxes and my rent and everything else. And the rest of the time, I'm sleeping. Now, uh, criticism, of course, goes back as pretty much to cave paintings. I'm sure someone was there. Um, how do you do you each define or see your your role as a critic? My role is to get the people to go to the theater. If I didn't like the play and say I don't recommend this. I would like you to go and check for yourself. Um, my role is to be entertaining, to pass on my enthusiasm, my enthusiasm both positive and negative, to uh, make, the, make the event exciting, make you want to go whether you would agree with me or not, make the audience, the listeners, into a better <coughs> audience, to, to comment on something in a review that might make an audience look at something in a different way. If, if somebody, <laughs> I'm always remembered, I was sitting in the, I was in the ladies' washroom once a few years ago. And I was, uh, I was at a production, uh, at, I was at a certain production, and the, <laughs> no, I'll tell you the production, and you'll, you'll appreciate this, I hope. Uh, and the ladies, two ladies behind me were saying, yeah, it was cute. You know, you didn't have to think. It was Shaw. We were watching a play, about, you know, it was Man and Superman. And the woman said, it was cute. I don't want to know those people. Okay? Those people don't read the newspaper. So what you, want, what you want to do, what I want to do, is try and give you something to look at that's a little bit different. So if I say something is boring, it was spectacular and it was boring, you explain why it was boring. If the audience's imagination isn't pricked, then they're going to be bored. So you want to be able to say, 
to an audience, you know, this is why such and such was boring. If you can put it in a context that they can understand or talk about it in terms that they can, they can uh, appreciate or relate to, then maybe you will get uh, a better audience and then maybe we can get better theater. Your okay. turn. Okay. <clears throat> I think the job falls into two kind of camps. Uh, and Robert, maybe you can remember who